Welcome back here. What's the Bourbon Judge? Happy New Year. Happy 2022. We're back at it, baby. Ready to have some fun. And we're going to have some fun without these glasses because these are just uh, crazy. <laughs> oh, man. So we're going to dive into today my top 10 bourbons of 2021. But before we do so, real quick, a couple updates. So number one, as I said, I think it was actually in the last episode, now that I'm all done with school, all done, I have a ton more time to dedicate to the channel. So uh, you're gonna see a lot of changes in 2022 for the, from the Bourbon Judge. So let me, let me kind of run through some of those changes. Number one, um, I'm actually going live for the first time at the end of January. Date still TBD, I will get back to everyone very soon. But again, at the end of January, uh, collaborating with some other uh, whiskey YouTubers, as well as just some, some other professionals from the whiskey industry will be on the channel. Uh, during that live stream, we'll also have some giveaways, some prizes, just some fun things to kind of, you know, keep it fun and so forth. And uh, really looking forward to my first live stream. But in addition to that, I'll have future live streams also in 2022. Uh, also looking to just in general throughout the year, have more collaborations with other whiskey YouTubers, um, partnering with other just, you know, other whiskey experts in the industry, folks from the distillery and just other guests in general. Also bringing Cousin Anita back for a few episodes here and there. She does share her love and send her love with everyone out there. So uh, you will be seeing Cousin Anita very soon. Trust that. And um, last but not least, for my patrons as well. So my Patreon site, we always have a lot of fun, a lot of happy hours, prizes, and giveaways. I'm, I'm going to be doing even more of that in 2022 and changing up it as well. So looking forward to everything for this year has to offer. But for now, I'm ready to dive into my top 10 list of 2021, my bourbon list. And I will say, I will say, this list is going to be a little bit different. So this is my top 10 bourbon list of 2021. Uh, you're going to notice that these are, for the most part, I'm doing it almost in a, like, let's call it a three-part series. So today is my top 10 list of 2021 for just pure bourbons. And these were almost, if you think about it this way, they were bourbons that we were all, for the most part, able to find for the most part. They were definitely findable uh, from a price standpoint. They're only like 50 to about $100. I think there might be one that's just a couple of dollars more than 100. Um, but for the most part, easy uh, to find. Uh, didn't break the bank too much. It only for anywhere, anywhere from 50 to $100. And um, I didn't want to include any like top shelf in this list. So my second part of this series, so this is for today, top 10 bourbons of 2021, top 10. My second part of the series, which will be air on Tuesday, will be my top five rise. I didn't want to include rise in this list because if you're not a rye fan, you might not care about rise. <laughs> so that will be a completely separate episode, top five rise. And again, that will air on Tuesday. And then airing on Thursday will be part three of the series, which will be my top five, let's call it top shelf or highly allocated or just expensive shit. <laughs> so the top five uh, highly allocated or expensive bourbons if you will that will air on thursday all right i'm ready to dive into uh my top 10 list of uh 2021 my top 10 bourbons as i go through this you're gonna notice uh there's gonna be no asterisk bourbon judge i'm not going there no asterisk there's no honorable mentions all that i'm just keeping it straight up my top 10 list and and i will also say that uh i'm gonna go into just very high level uh why i picked each one all right is that cool all right, drum roll. Mrs. Judge hates when I do that, but I always love it. <laughs> Coming in at number 10. Obviously, we're going to go in the reverse order. Coming in at number 10, I know this was a very controversial bourbon for this year because it didn't pack the, the punch that we all loved, right? The A, the B, and the C. Coming in at number 10, Elijah Craig. C921. Now this one, I guess they almost kind of rebounded, right? Coming in at 120.2 proof, started to pack more of a punch. I definitely felt like it was a great uh, Elijah Craig showing. The A and the B were both good, but the C I thought was fantastic. I mean, I think all three were fantastic, right? At the end of the day, it's a $75 uh, barrel proof bourbon, aged 12 years. You can never go, long, go wrong rather with Elijah Craig barrel proof. So that's coming in, in number 10 spot. That always holds a very special place in my heart. All right, number nine. Now, this one was almost like a sleeper for me because I went into the year knowing who they were, but I had never sampled any of their juice until I recently had some of their, their, their more recent picks. So coming in number nine, none other than Nulu. So as I said before, so Nulu does a ton of like um, single barrel picks with either liquor stores, 
or just different like bourbon groups. So this one here uh, is one that I actually got from the New Jersey uh, Bourbon Club, Barrel Club. So this bottle is wows are good i mean damn good most of their stuff is barrel proof in this case this one here 120.6 proof packs a hell of a punch and is absolutely delicious that definitely belongs on my list for number nine for this year a sleeper was not aware of it but uh now i know everything about nulu <laughs> all right coming in at number eight this one i gotta give again i give shout shout outs to people who put me on certain things my man Blake out in Chicago, my man, he told me for years, he's like, Bourbon Judge, you need to find out about Starlight. They have all these different picks. I did a review of Starlight. Thanks again to the folks at Starlight who gave me some bottles. Um, I've had their honey, their honey bourbon, honey uh, rye finish, numerous ones. But this one coming in number eight, Starlight, the sherry cast finish. This bottle is wow, you're good. I mean, insane. I got this for, again from, uh, I think it was Sarasota Liquor Locker in Florida. By the way, if you ever go to Florida, please make sure you check out Sarasota Liquor Locker. They had like 15 different barrel picks. So I know my girl Rain's down there in Florida. Make sure you get to uh, Sarasota Liquor Locker. <laughs> you probably will find this bottle, if not something else uh, as well. But this Starlight Sherry Finish, absolutely one of the best surprises for 2021 for me personally absolutely love myself some starlight products starlight as i said in the um, episode when i review their products what i like about them is that they do everything there are the farmers uh they distill it they age it they bottle it they do it all so definitely worthy of an eight spot coming in number seven i just finished my last bottle of it because it's so damn good out of uh, washington woodenville woodenville barrel proof bourbon is absolutely um <laughs> I gotta kiss this bottle. It's so damn good. It's like they are, or they were a craft distillery, but now they're growing. You see a lot more Woodenville products, the small batch, the rise, the barrel proof bourbons, a lot more all over. It is, this product is, oh gosh, speechless. I'm just speechless. And I'm not, I'm never lost for words, as Mrs. Judge will know. Uh, but this bottle, absolutely amazing. If you see a uh, Woodenville barrel proof product, please make sure you pick it up instantly because it's they're just too damn good too damn good wow 10 9 8 7 wow we went through four super quick all right coming in at number six a bit of a surprise for me also in 2021 i didn't expect this to be that good but it is that good <sighs> sam houston 15 folks this is an amazing bottle that is just so, I mean, so Sam Houston, again, is sort, at least for this one, Sam Houston 15, source Barton uh, juice, uh, age 15 years. They always have different batches by the state. So I have the Maryland batch number one. I've had a couple different batches, not just Maryland, but other states as well. Folks, Sam Houston 15 was an incredible blend. I've had multiple batches, as I said, multiple states. Uh, there's not one I have not liked so far. So this is absolutely a wonderful, and I mean amazing bottle. Sam Houston 15 coming in at number six. Wow, moving fast through the list. Oh man, all right, number five. Oh boy. This distillery, I need to visit. I've had so much of their, uh, their bourbon over the years and it never disappoints. Hill Rock Castring. Now this happens to be a store pick um, uh, out of New Jersey, but Hill Rock Castring, and this is actually a cognac finish. I'm putting this one right in front of me because it's that damn good. <laughs> I love this one because, I mean, I love Hill Rock Castring products as a whole. This cognac finish, I thought was just so well balanced, so wonderful. Um, from a price standpoint, this is the only one, actually, actually these two are the only ones that are, uh, let's call it slightly above the $100 mark. Sam Houston was like $115, I think this one was like $120, but again, they're not highly allocated. I saw a lot of these actually this re this weekend when I was out um, bourbon hunting. Hill Rock Cast Strength Bourbon, especially the Cognac or even just the regular Cast Strength, absolutely one of the best bourbons I've had probably honestly in my life. I love myself some Hill Rock Bourbon. If you can find the Cast Strength version, it's absolutely fantastic. And I mean, fantastic. All right, we got 10, nine, eight, seven, six, number five. What made the top four? Hey, real quick, I need three quick favors. 
Number one, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment. Let's go back and forth. Let me know what's on your list. If I miss one, let me know what's uh, what you're thinking I missed uh, per se. And then also make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so that each time I put out content, you are always aware. Now I should say, just because I'm wearing a Barstown shirt does not mean that a Barstown product got number one. I know a lot of people are probably thinking that. <laughs> I bet you my girl uh, Tony or Jonathan or David Cooper, I bet you one of my patrons is probably saying, Bourbon Judge, are you wearing a Bar Sound shirt just because Bar Sound is going to be your number one product? Maybe, maybe not. We shall see. All right, all right. Back to it. Coming in at number four. Now, I picked one of these, but it could have been honestly either or because they were both just truly amazing bottles for 2021 for their wood finishing series. Maker's Mark F. A E O one, folks. Like I said, up until maybe even 2020, even going to 2021, I was never a huge Maker's Mark fan. F A E O one, or I could even have F A E O two as well, right? They both. They were such fantastic bourbons. I love that whole wood finishing series. I love the sweetness, the smokiness. That's the reason why I picked these or this bottle here, F A E O one and two. Both fantastic, but number one. Oh my gosh. As you can tell, I really enjoy the hell out of this bottle. Nothing like it. Coming in at uh, $70. Great from an MSRP standpoint. I found this in numerous locations. I actually just found another bottle this past weekend. I mean, it's still out there, which I love. Folks, if you have not found Maker's Mark FEU 101 or 2, make sure you grab a bottle. That is my number four. All right. Top three. This is where the good gets going, baby. <laughs> Coming in number three. Oh man. This one, I reviewed, I think it was number four on the episode, but I missed number five and six. But number six, I've had this one. Absolutely a, an amazing bottle. Barstown Discovery Series number six. Oh my gosh. You want to talk about a fantastic blended bourbon? So this one here again, 68% uh, 11 year Kentucky. 16% Indiana seven year and 16% Tennessee 17 year. What I love about this is that fact that Bar Sound, well, I got the shirt on, but seriously, the, what I love about it is that Bar Sound, they blend some fantastic bourbons and they put, in my opinion, the perfect amount of dickle, it's Tennessee, but we know tick is dickle, um, the perfect amount of dickle in this bottle. It's just 17% and it's just, I mean, oh my God, I'm sorry, 16%. And it's just truly absolutely an amazing pour it's oh it's just i'm just lost for words i mean i'm literally i'm lost for words discovery six one of the best bourbons this year this is oh, I, i'm just I, i'm done i'm done it's number three it's just that damn good <laughs> all right so what made number two and number one i mean i had some heavy hitters here already so what made number two and number one so number two had to be, in my opinion, it was supposed to be the regular George C. Stag this year. But maybe they, they didn't make enough of it. Who knows the reason why. But number two, absolutely, Stag Jr. Batch 17. This, in my opinion, I know we were going back and forth with a lot of different people on the channel that comment. They were saying, Bourbon Judge, do you think it's really the George C. Stag? Absolutely. Yes, it, it had to be. It's too damn well-rounded to be Stag Jr. Stag Jr. normally has like, it's a bit rough around the edges, just kind of knocks you out a little bit. But George C. Stag is powerful, but very well-rounded. This is an amazing pour, hence the reason why it came in the second spot. Slightly hard, of all of these, this might be the one that was probably the hardest to find, but if you found if you found it, I mean, I even saw it this weekend for, I think it was like 130, double MSRP, but knowing how good it is, it might be worth that price point. This is a fantastic pour. Hence the reason why I had to have that one as number two. It's just so damn good. So I'm making room for number one because number one needs to live all by itself in the, in the front. And that's the one I'm going to sip because you guys know me. I will never have an episode without sipping some bourbon. So coming in number one, I will say by far, this was the bourbon that surprised the hell out of me. Did not expect this, and I mean this was the last bourbon I expected to be A, on my top 10 list, B, to be my number one, because how much I disliked the, I think it was uh, version two of it.
coming in number one, hands down, the, in my opinion, the best bourbon I tried all year from a standard, you know, let's call it price uh, availability and so forth standpoint. None other than Remus Repeal number five, baby. This juice, <laughs> MGP, let's just say MGP came correct. They said, okay, you know what? We we produce for everyone out there, for well, the majority of folks and distilleries out there or uh, companies out there. We're gonna make our own the absolute best. Remus Repeal Reserve number five, uh, 16, 15, 13 year old bourbon all blended together. Get out of here, come on. This was so damn good. My only re regret, my only regret, honestly, was the fact that I didn't buy a second bottle and I can't find a second bottle right now. I've looked long and hard for it. I can't find it anywhere, unfortunately. But Remus Repeal number five, if you see this on the shelf, don't stop, don't ask questions, do not pass go. <laughs> buy, 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 all day long. It's one hell of a gavel good. Hey, I say this each and every week. Peace, cheers, salute. I appreciate everyone out there. Thank you for all the love and support. Looking forward to 2022 and uh, sharing it with all of you. Cheers, everybody. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's damn good. Cheers, everybody. Peace out.